Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, I will be talking about this uh, Turkish outcry or Aufschrei now. Um, the triggering event for this hashtag has been the uh, brutal murder of this woman that you're seeing uh, here. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, violence against women has been a problem uh, in Turkey. Uh, but this was uh, different, uh, this ended different. Um, she was, <clears throat> there was an attempt to rape her. Uh, it happened in southern Turkey. She was riding a minibus on her, on her way home uh, from uh, back to college. She was uh, studying psychology. And uh, the, uh, she was attempted to be raped, which she resisted, and then uh, she was killed in order to uh, hide the evidence. Her hands were cut off, etc. So the violence involved in all of this really triggered uh, an outrage. So uh, when I read this and when <clears throat> I was sitting at home and I was thinking, um, there's got to be, we, we got to do something about this. Uh, violence, uh, harassment, uh, discrimination, these are problems that really need to be seen and talked about. And I was kind of uh, inspired by the projects like Everyday Sexism, and I knew about uh, the, uh, the Aufschrei uh, because I'm a loyal uh, Die Zeit fan. I, I read, I try to follow the German uh, media. So what I did was I wrote these uh, four Twitters, uh, four tweets, and um, these are the translations there. So I said, can you write what you went through for being a woman with the tag, uh, Sanda Anlat, and start the sentence because I was a woman. I wanted people to use this uh, terminology. It didn't really happen. They, they used their own thing, but that's fine. So I said, uh, my, the second uh, tweet is my goal. Maybe through this we can make the discrimination and harassment that women, irrespective of class or similar differences or religiosity, etc., uh, face visible and demand uh, solutions. Then uh, my, uh, my next proposal was, because this is my idea, I will start. So I put there uh, what I went through. Because I was a woman, I was slapped in the face, I was kicked, I was touched against my will, I was laughed at when I parked, or actually I get laughed at <laughs> when I park every day. Uh, my opinion was not asked, I was scared of uh, being abducted. So um, the first day, not much happened, I asked a couple of friends close friends to share their stories as well under the hashtag they did. Uh, I rt their uh, tweets. Uh, and then the next day, which was a Sunday, and I think it had contributed to that, it basically uh, went wild. Uh, over four days, there were uh, over 300,000 original uh, tweets. Uh, with uh, retweets, it reached a number of uh, one million. And uh, when I was preparing this presentation, I could see that women were still tweeting uh, under the hashtag. So I thought to myself, and maybe it will come up in the questions, maybe it was the right time, maybe it was the right hashtag, maybe it was the sincerity, uh, maybe it was the accumulated anger uh, about the subject, and maybe it was all of that. Just to show you that the hashtag was used uh, all over Turkey, so it wasn't really confined to any particular part. Um, my goal, basically, was um, uh, to create uh, a platform for women uh, to share these uh, harassment and violence experiences while making a problem uh, visible. Because when you tell of these things, a lot of people uh, seem to think, actually men seem to think, oh, you're exaggerating, you're misunderstanding, they're flattering you, and um, actually they're not. So, um, through this sharing and through making this problem visible, I thought I could empower people, uh, actually women, and I also wanted uh, us to show solidarity to each other because we w I wanted women to see this is not only you. All women, irrespective of this and that, uh, face this problem. 
um, they couldn't really talk about this issue, so I wanted to change that. Um, basically, it went uh, beyond my imagination, and uh, it really turned into an awareness-raising exercise, because most men were shocked, and I will show you some tweets uh, in a second. It also turned into a group therapy for women. Uh, it was also lamenty, you know, it was, it was as if like women were crying with silent uh, tears, like the first three hours, the tweets were like raining and I was, I was crying in front of the computer uh, as well. But at the same time, it created something really a magical opportunity for healing because if you are silent, you cannot really discuss an issue. And when you start talking about it, then there can be uh, healing. And I think what is really important is it created an inventory of harassment in the country. And it wasn't done by the government. It wasn't done by an NGO, women's NGO or anything. It was done uh, by uh, women. Now, uh, I think the tweets are really showing that there is no secure place uh, for women. Um, the, the harassment problem is not confined uh, to what she went through, Özgecan Aslan went through. It's not a matter of public transportation, it's a matter of work, it's a matter of street, it's a matter of family, school, whatever, even the police, and I will tell you in a second. So, and uh, again, it's happening to all women. It doesn't have anything to do with ethnicity, religiosity, class, fat, ugly, it doesn't really matter. Um, the effects of the tag uh, continue uh, online as well as offline. I know, uh, I know firsthand that uh, there is a huge data there, so there are people who are uh, scholars actually, who are interested in analyzing the data to understand what are the major issues, you know, what is the most talked about venue, etc. Uh, etc. There is a website uh, under the hashtag. Um, so just to show you some uh, tweets, um, when we dress lightly, they are turned on. When we dress conservatively, they are curious about the jewel inside. So this is basically making a reference about the headscarf issue. When you grow up without a dad in a climate of fear, you develop manly manners uh, to protect uh, yourself, says, say these women. Femme and Turkey, they are saying, because of our way of action, hundreds of messages like whores. Why don't you protest in our house as well? The tits are small, didn't really like them. I was 12 when a guy followed me home and assaulted me in the elevator. Since then, I didn't get into an elevator with a man. Um, not to turn on the lights when you enter the flat, so they won't know uh, where exactly you're living. I'm not worried that the thief entering my place will steal anything but will hurt me. I don't write my name on the doorbell, which is something quite common in Turkey, actually. The next one uh, I'm not going to read. I think you can read it uh, yourself. Um, not to call the repairman when you are alone at home, keeping a pocket knife and pepper spray at the door entrance. This girl, Özgecan, she also had a pepper spray with herself uh, and she used it when she was attacked and it didn't really help her. Uh, hugging a total stranger by saying, how are you? And whispering to her ear that she's being followed, like pretending that you know her uh, and that we should change the uh, street. Uh, so men were basically just, these were examples from uh, women, just random, and men were shocked. Uh, go and read what is written in Sanda Anlat, we may die from embarrassment as a country and as a man. We Turkish men, we are part of a huge problem and we are seeing and knowing how spread uh, this problem is. So I'm really proud of them <laughs> because um, this is quite unexpected. And uh, after this tag, there was so much uh, discussion of the issue and um, many of them um, did this uh, in Istanbul. You know, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I translated them for you. I got my skirt and I'm coming 21st February, Taksim Tunel. And you could see some uh, fathers who came uh, with their daughters and their skirts. Um, 
Oh, it also, I was walking on the street one day, uh, again in March or February, and I just saw somebody printed uh, some of the tweets uh, on an A4 paper and hang them like this. The first harassment I can remember was when I was 10. He attacked when I opened the building's door. I did not tell anyone, always watch my back and other women and on the right the police officer called in because of burglary saw that my friend's husband was away he insisted to be uh, helping her to be her helpmate so basically someone printed and hanged the tweets uh, so that more people could see it um, and again, somebody sent me this banner happening in a university. For those who question whether harassment is that common, an unwanted hand on your body or even a word that one does not want uh, to hear is uh, harassment. Again, uh, using the hashtag, it's totally uh, unconnected with me. So. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a scholar, I'm a social uh, scientist who's working on uh, justice system, law and politics in Turkey. What, I, what we did was with a friend of mine, we looked at the tweets and we were really interested uh, what women were saying about the justice system, how the justice system was prosecuting these people or how they were uh, treating them. And we analyzed data uh, as, to, uh, as to the police and it turns out that the the police uh, comes out as an actor of harassment. We analyzed the tweets that contained the word uh, the police um, and it turns out that especially when you go to the police complaining that uh, you have been a victim of sexual harassment, um, you know, the police officers add you as a friend in Facebook, send you a message over WhatsApp, etc, etc. Um, there are complaints about impunity, there are complaints about police's actions, especially in street protests, etc. Uh, women are saying when they are complaining about these acts, they are being blamed for dressing lightly or uh, downplaying the, the police acting as if they are downplaying the act. So uh, we were very concerned about this and we are now taking steps uh, to address this issue. We will be holding a conference at the police academy uh, this, this month. We will be uh, addressing it hopefully at the European Society of Criminology. Um, more offline or online, there is a Twitter account under that name, totally unconnected with me. Uh, there is a website, totally unconnected with me, so I'm, I'm quite happy that people are taking this. Um, we can find many, many culprits about this issue. I'm not really get into that. We can blame cultural conservatism, patriarchy, sexism, misogyny. Um, I wanted to uh, show you uh, the speech of Julia Gillard, but I will. I am running a little bit out of time. I, I will in a second. I will finish and I will just conclude with that. Um, what can be solu the solution? I have been asked about this question so many times, and I ha I have to say I don't have any recipes. I don't have any easy answers. And this has this is something which uh, Anna uh, and I have been discussing over uh, Skype when I was preparing for this. I think um, these type of hashtags just show us the problem. And now we must really speak uh, deliberate. This is the country of Habermas, after all, <laughs> deliberative democracy. So we need to debate. Uh, it's a process and men have to be included. I don't think we women can achieve this all by ourselves, not at all. Um, I think what is really important is the tag showed us that there is a problem and that finally we have started addressing it, talking about it, and everybody's going to do their own thing from a different front. I'm going to be working on the police, somebody's going to be setting up in the internet, the uh, uh, address, whoever uh, can do whatever they can do, they will be doing what they can. Um, my, one of the things that really frustrates me is that people m focus too much on governments and uh, too much on the justice system, too much on the states and not enough on society. Because um, all of these attitudes, patriarchy, etc., etc., they are being produced, reproduced through language, through customs, through culture, every day and every way, uh, as Julia Gilliard says. Um, through society. So we really have to work on society and this was something that I was uh, trying uh, to do. 
Um, just to show you an example, for instance, it's a, a child brides are a problem in Turkey, and this wedding dress seller, uh, she just put this sign on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, on her uh, on her uh, showcase saying, "We do not sell or rent wedding dresses uh, to girls that are not yet uh, 18." And this is the kind of civic resistance or civic actions that I'm really talking about. You cannot really do this with uh, governments. Last point, I was asked by Anne to address this issue, whether I had received any personal attacks after starting this hashtag. No, I didn't. But I also must say that I kept a deliberately low profile for various reasons. Uh, I appeared only once on TV. I was I declined most of the requests from uh, local TV channels, uh, spoke to foreign media. Um, but my reason was basically, I'm a social scientist, I do research, I work with judges, prosecutors, policemen. So I said to myself, I do not need this kind of publicity following me wherever I go, hindering my social scientist work. I'm an academician, but I'm also an activist, so there is a fine line there. I'm trying to balance it. I don't want that kind of publicity uh, obstructing my work. Um, a second reason is I do feel that this belongs to the women of Turkey. It doesn't belong to me. It's not mine. I might have started it, but they have responded to it. So I thought it would have been unethical to be the face of uh, all of this. Uh, I also uh, am a person, I don't like power. Um, so I don't really want that power that comes uh, with that. Um, and it's always a question of trading publicity uh, with uh, privacy, and I don't want to lose my uh, privacy uh, either by being too much uh, recognized. Anyways, um, this is my presentation. I wanted to just uh, show you um, maybe uh, one minute of Julia Gillard's speech, because uh, when we say what, are, what is the problem, patriarchy, misogyny, sexism, I think she puts it uh, very bluntly. I will just show you um, for one minute, if I can. <laughs> Thank you. If you can, okay. Uh, Julia Gillard is basically um, making a wonderful speech. Uh, I would recommend everybody to watch it. I was offended too by the sexism, by the misogyny of the leader of the opposition, Cat calling across this table at me as I sit here as Prime Minister. If the Prime Minister wants to, politically speaking, make an honest woman of herself, something that would never have been said to any man sitting in this chair. I was offended when the Leader of the Opposition went outside in the front of Parliament and stood next to a sign that said, Ditch the Witch. I was offended when the Leader of the Opposition stood next to a sign that described me as a man's bitch. I was offended by those things. Misogyny, sexism, every day from this Leader of the Opposition. Every day, in every way, across the time the Leader of the Opposition has sat in that chair and I've sat in this chair, that is all we have heard from him. Thank you very much. Anne? Hi. So I will let you catch your breath. <laughs> but thanks for the lovely presentation, first of all. Um, the thing is, I feel we have to talk about a lot of stuff, especially for the amount of time, time that we have. And on the other hand, it's so scary how similar the discussion is compared to what we had. Uh, it's still an ongoing debate, uh, on the other hand, um, about everyday sexism in Germany, um, especially connected with the Ausschrei um, campaign. But um, what I really loved and uh, what I can only emphasize is the thing that um, you put this out there in the world and you have no idea what is going to happen, like especially for me when this whole thing started. It was already a success, so to speak, when uh, during the night so many women were brave enough to speak up. 
But then it was just so beautiful to see how they made it their own, how they claimed it, and how also we had this thing that people were making street art with the hashtag and using it in offline spaces as sort of a marker to, to make people aware of a sexist situation, what is still amazing to me. And um, But yeah, the other thing that you mentioned and which drives me crazy, um, It's also this continuing question of, but how do we fix this? And then, <clears throat> like you said, they only want to rely on, on laws and, and politics. And that's about it. And they completely forget about that this is also part of education. Like, to actually make people aware of these issues. Um, are you aware of any, maybe, campaigns that have uh, arisen from that in, in Turkey now? Or do you have any idea if there's something going on like that? Like, maybe for... I'm always a big fan of saying, well, we, we have to start with the kids first. I mean, they are, like, the ones that get these messages. <laughs> and uh, from then on, it's just getting worse most of the time. So, um, are there any campaigns like that? Well, um, we have a problem in Turkey in the sense of overemphasis of education. Like every problem in Turkey, they wanna, they they somehow like tie this to education. Oh, it's an educational problem. Oh, we, you know, in, we need to fix this in high school. We need to fix this in primary school. We need to actually we need to fix this in kindergarten. So <laughs> the, the the answer is no. There is no educational uh, campaign at that moment. But I. I think um, education, I, I, would, I don't want to say education per se, but maybe an awareness. Yeah. And uh, I think awareness starts uh, in the family and uh, in the society as well. So, um, I'm, for instance, this police academy thing, they are uh, trying to introduce a gender training to policemen. So That's we will amazing. see. So we will see how uh, this will go. But this is an adult education. It's not really a you know education in the sense that you're uh, talking about. Probably we will. Hopefully we will be seeing this uh, uh, in the future. Yeah, but of course, I mean, uh, in the end, you have to educate people on every level. So it's just to make them aware that this is not just because here there has been this image of you know this is like the the guys who are like over 60 or something and once that generation dies out patriarchy is gone so that was the kind of image they were spreading it's like yeah not really sure about that and uh, also since these guys are themselves role models right it's for the other generations so as long as we have these role models too uh, this system is still in place but um what do you feel how Yeah, what's what's the challenge to make actually people aware that there is like this societal system of patriarchy and this is actually a thing around the world, like most places, um, even when it's so obvious, especially with the statistics. I mean, you don't even need the hashtag. You could just look at the statistics on gender-based violence, for example. They already prove and make your point, but um, do you feel that with, um, with these personal stories people have understood better what this is actually about? Um, I think so, because I think when you relay personal stories, I think there is always an emotional element there, there is empathy there, there is understanding there. Um, sometimes, uh, before cold numbers and statistics, it's really important to make voices heard. It, it's very important to make victims to give victims a voice so that they can uh, tell their story. So I just think um, hearing these stories in media, in, uh, in websites and in daily life, it, it, it is changing little by little. Like it's sometimes removing offensive advertisements from circulation or sometimes making public. It was in my presentation. Uh, I don't know if you have ever been to Istanbul and Taksim area. Uh, there are lots of donash and other uh, little shops there. And one of them basically made a delivery uh, to a woman. And uh, the delivery guy uh, was texting her all the time, like offensively harassing her. And she basically, right after this, she totally exposed it. 
and uh, the store had to fire the guy with, with the public pressure and had to uh, issue an apology to the public saying, we're so sorry, we apologize, we don't tolerate this, etc., etc. So I think this is how it starts. You have to put pressure on all those men, and I'm sorry, guys, we have to put pressure on you if you're doing it. Um, this is how we do, but I don't, I don't mean to say like put pressure or attack, but just showing that this is unacceptable, this cannot continue, so just create little by little uh, the fact that this, is, this, is, this cannot be tolerated. This might have happened in 1950, in 1990, but in year 2015, uh, this has to change, this cannot uh, go on. So I, 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 I guess it's obvious that I believe in incremental uh, <laughs> change. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that really touched me was when you said that the whole hashtag um, turned into some sort of group therapy, because that is something I totally can relate to. Just even like reading the stories totally triggers my memory of how everything started with Afshai. It's pretty crazy. And... Um, it, it, I, don't, I, I was wondering, because we always got this, um, this attack that people thought we only created the hashtag to, uh, yeah, to demonize men, basically, whereas we just wanted to express ourselves. Just without thinking about poor man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was wondering if you got those uh, uh, comments too, or were there like fewer ones of these? And the, the, I mean, of course, you showed the men who were like their eyes being open and everything, and uh, I hope they were in the majority, maybe. <laughs> um, the thing is, I think uh, keeping a low profile on my part might have prevented these kind of things because it remained anonymous. And it, when it's anonymous, when it's owned by many people, then who's, who are they going to attack? Um, you know, so I think it helped, ha uh, it helped in that regard because it doesn't have one persona or one representative being the voice. Um, it prevents from attacks. I'm sure there were, but I didn't read any. Some people have said, oh, maybe this and that, but I don't even recall. That's how uh, unimportant I felt uh, it was. And I think um, many men were just really like very, very surprised and taken by it, uh, taken by it. So um, yeah. like this was my check. experience, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, I experienced it that they had some sort of reality check to actually get a feeling for what it's like being a woman in this day and age. And this Many of them told me, happening. for instance, the next day at public transportation, oh, I want to give up my seat. <laughs> you know, I want them to sit down and then feel relaxed. And, and now they um, want a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other thing. So, but maybe these are the good examples uh, that I'm uh, hearing. I don't know. Yeah, but like you mentioned, that's the other thing they try to frame this whole debate as some um, as if sexism is a wom women's problem, so women have to fix it. And I keep stressing the the point that this is actually something that's uh, affecting the whole society. So we have to work together on this because, yeah, you know this, gender roles also imprison men in different ways, but they do. So without them, but they we like would be the power off. that comes with it. That's the problem. That is the thing. Yeah. So and you know, when you have power, you don't really give up power easily. So we have to make sure that they don't have that much power anymore. <laughs> By using hashtags, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm not sure if we're done. Okay, okay thank Time you. Time is up. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, sorry, we didn't have time for questions, but if anybody would like to talk with them afterwards, they'll be around here. 